What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of everybody's favorite mediocre program. This podcast is Just Okay. I'm your host, Nick Rose. I'm your co-host, Paul Rose. And Paul, did you know that I tried to go to the store and find some camo pants today? No. Yeah, I couldn't find any. Hit the theme. Alright everybody, we are back. How you doing, Paul? Good. How are you doing? Doing great, man. How's your week been? It's been really good. It's been a really crazy week. Yeah. It's been an insanely crazy week. Oh my gosh. We've been so busy. Yeah. We're actually... Okay, um, little behind the scenes secret of the podcast here. We always do the podcast like a week in advance so that we have other stuff on our plate that we can do, right? Exactly. Yeah. We are recording this right before it comes out. Because we've been so stuck on time. Uh, what have we been doing? What? Why has it been so busy? I'm not sure. Okay, so we had your last band concert of the school year. Yeah. And then yesterday we actually had your field day. Yeah. Yeah, t- t- tell me about it, man. It was really cool. Uh, I volunteered to help and work, like, behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, air quotes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got to help out the kindergartners, uh... And all the other grades. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I saw you running your butt off, dude. You were busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was that was cool, man. Um, it was cool because I saw you actually got to come out and help your sister. So here's the crazy parallel of it. It was your last field day. Yeah. Ever. And it's your sister's first. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. We got to do uh, both things. And it was a long day. It was crazy busy. Um I got there at like 8 in the morning with you guys. Yeah. I volunteered some some Gatorades to you guys. And then uh, I was there literally all day. We didn't leave until 3 o'clock in the afternoon with no shade, no cover, none of that. And I am crispy and burned. Same. You're not as bad as me, though. Well, my arms are like way more sore than you. That I is mean, true. like. Oh my gosh, they hurt. <laughs> that is true. And I had to carry two huge coolers full of ice. It do- it doesn't help to have my dogs crawling all over all over my <clears throat> arms. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. They love you so much. Yeah. Uh what else has been going on, man? What else have we been up to? Just kind of it's like a go 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 thing all the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh I got that new Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um tell me about it. Um it's really uh, cool. I don't really understand the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't understand like how you win. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you have to battle and stuff, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I I played with you that one time. I thought it was cool. I mean, it's kind of like Brawlhalla a little bit, but I I don't understand the game. Like, yeah. uh, it's fun. It's fun, but it's weird. Um, I got a new game too. I got Cyberpunk finally. Ooh. And here's the crazy thing. <clears throat> Sorry. So we went to the game store that night. Yeah. And I, I hate to say this, but the cashier, I, I needed to get out of that place. She was mm-hmm. one of those people that I don't like to talk about on my show. Yeah. Yeah. Super like, oh, my God, I'm so offended by everything. Blah, blah, blah. It's all about me sort of thing. Right. Yeah. But she was so stuck to her script that when I went to buy Cyberpunk, she actually ID'd me. And I thought, okay, no problem. I'll give you that. You have to enter some code or something in your computer. Nope. She didn't enter anything. It was just, hey, can I have your ID? I need to make sure you're over 17. Flattering, but I think I look a a little more like I'm older than 17. Yeah. Why would she need to check? Uh, Because she was a robot. (laughs) She was uh, an NPC, as we say, a non-playable character. Yeah. Yeah. So um, besides, besides that, what else have we been doing? Uh, grandma came over to the house. Yeah, that that was another big part of uh, why we were so busy. Your grandma was here for our, for a week, yeah. and so we couldn't really get a lot of stuff done uh, per se with the with the podcast and stuff. Yeah, but it gives us more interesting stuff to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and your mom went to the movies. We went and saw the new Doctor Strange. Nice. Yeah, madness in the multiverse of madness. I think it was called. 
cool. Either way, dude, it was really good. It ties into WandaVision uh, for anyone curious about that. But it was a really great Doctor Strange movie. I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Cool. <clears throat> it was a nice uh, getaway night, which we don't really always get a lot of. So, uh, what else? When? What, what else is going on? Uh, we just watched Insidious last night. Insidious, dude. Okay, so last night was Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Okay, tell me about it. Oh my gosh, it was so scary. Um, I think it was uh really creepy. How um, you know what? I'm not gonna give out spoilers. <laughs> I was just gonna say it's really scary. I'm glad you liked it, man. Like, you said you wanted a movie that was going to scare the pants off you, but at the end of the movie, you were still wearing your pants. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't that scary, was it? No, I was wearing shorts. Oh, okay, so it worked. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, um, so what we like to do, um, for anyone listening, we like to watch horror movies. Mm -hmm. And you have a list that I curated for you of a bunch of horror films that we've been trying to work through that I think are kind of appropriate for around your age. Insidious was on your list. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, we have the four pack because it's not streaming. You have to pay for it. Ugh. And um, I got the four pack. I don't remember much of the, about the sequels. So we're going to have to go back and, and watch those. But Okay. I'd love to watch them. And I thought it was cool, too, because it was Friday the 13th, right? So what movie comes to mind when you think, well, we should watch a horror movie on Friday the 13th? Friday the 13th. Bingo. But we don't like to do things traditional, do we? No. No way, Jose. Um, we've also been, me and your mom have been watching The Last Drive-In on Shutter with Joe Bob Briggs. Nice. Yeah, dude. I actually, we missed it last night because we watched Insidious. I'm sorry. <clears throat> don't be, dude. It'll be streaming tomorrow. Okay. I don't know the two movies that he picked, but I love doing that. I love watching horror movies. Nice. Anymore, it just seems like movies are so, like, kind of cookie cutter. Yeah. Uh, in a way that's like, they're not that original. There's, also, there's so much going on that it's, like, predictable. Um, a lot of old comedies that I loved growing up don't seem to hold up to the test of time anymore. Yeah. And so, but one thing I can always stick through is horror. Um, I've been wanting to watch Host. Am I allowed to watch that one? Host was really good. I think you'd love that, actually. Nice. Um, <clears throat> let's see. That actually reminded me of something, but I just lost my train of thought. Oh, hey, you know what else we didn't talk about, I don't think? What? Oh, maybe we did. Did we talk about Free Comic Book Day last week? I think so. No. Think so. No? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay, so last week was Free Comic Book Day. Yeah. Yeah, what did we do? Uh, we went to Mile High Comics. Mile High Comics, dude. And uh, got a bunch of free comic books. Uh, there was a really good selection. Yeah, dude. So they had, f- what, 58 new comics that came out for the, under the free section. Yeah. But they were only allowing three comics per person. Man, that's like so unfair. I know, How? right? So the, what, what it was was we got three for you, three for me, three for your sister. And then we hit the other comic book stores and try to get as many as we can. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think we got the the majority of like the good ones. Yeah. Between all of us. And they also had a deal. There was one comic in particular that they weren't handing out for free that you had to buy the whole pack. Whole package deal is like 150 bucks, but you got every one of them, including yeah. that one rare one. Ooh. We didn't do that because I didn't want to spend 150 bucks. <laughs> what was that one? Uh, <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know. One? I don't know. They didn't tell us. Nice. They just knew that there was one hanging out in the back. So, but it was cool, man. They had, you know, they had celebrity guests and stuff like that. We actually got our picture taken in front of the Doctor Strange mural. Yeah. And I've been waiting to see anyone post it because I don't know what happened to that photo that we took. Mm-hmm. But we got a cool poster. Your sister got a hat. Yeah. Um, I love Free Comic Day. That's one thing that um, I've always loved doing with you guys ever since you were babies. And, uh, you know, it was hard because the last couple of years have come and gone and we haven't been able to go do it. Yeah. Because of like COVID and stuff like that. And then the last last year I had to work and I missed it. So this year I took it off. I said, I'm not missing it this year. And we made it a cool event day, I think. I'm still catching up on my comics. Yeah, me too. I got a bunch. I haven't had a chance to read any of them. Um, I've also been on a, a, a kick lately. I've been hunting down, trying to hunt down Pokemon cards, man. Oh my gosh, Pokemon cards are like so <clears throat> cool. <clears throat> They're impossible to find. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't stock the shelves up regularly. And when they do, it's like vultures, man. They come and they take them off the shelves faster than you can get there. Yeah. Well, the other day I went and the lady had them full, 
like fully stocked all the way to the brim. Nice. Had the whole aisle blocked off. Told me I had to wait 30 minutes before I was allowed to buy them. What? Yeah, I don't know why. It's like they had to cool off or something, like fresh out of the oven. I don't know, but I wasn't able to buy them. So I've been kind of itching for some Pokemon cards lately. I feel like um, you can't really get those uh, single uh, packs of Pokemon cards. I feel like um, you have to buy the big packs Mm because those are the only ones available. Yeah, like the trainer boxes, but they yeah. limit you one per, per like, checkout. Yeah. So even if I was to get that trainer box, I couldn't get one for me, one for you, one for your mom. I couldn't do that because it's limited to one yeah. per day, and they, like, take your card or something like that. Hmm. <clears throat> but I don't know, man. Beyond that, um, you actually had a cool subject you wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah. Yeah, what was it? Um, haunted hospitals. And that came from a from a friend of yours, right? A suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So we're gonna do that this week. Ten horrifying hospitals you never want to stay in. Should we get started on it? Yes. All right. Should I read you the big creepy intro? Sure. All righty. Here we go. Dim the lights. Are they dimmed? Uh, no. Okay. Well, that's okay because I'm too scared to, in the dark. <laughs> All right, man. Hospitals, as you know, are by and large pretty creepy. Yeah. Yeah. After all, I mean, you're talking about big, sterile, labyrinth structures where people often often go to die, honestly. Yeah. And that's just uh, actual medical hospitals. And we haven't even touched the insane creepiness of mental hospitals, which uh, kick things up two or three notches based on their purpose and uh, history alone. Hmm. Yeah. What's up? Oh, I thought you were going to say something. No. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Either way, you know, there's a reason that lots of these scary hosp- movies are based on old, run-down, and abandoned hospitals, and the buildings are all over the world, and many of them are creepy for reasons beyond just looking the part. Ooh. So here's 10 of the most horrifying hospitals to avoid at all costs. Nice. And hopefully this is creepier than our last episode with the clowns, because I thought yeah. it was interesting history, but it wasn't as scary as I had intended it to be. No. So Anyway, number 10 on the list is the Royal Hope Hospital in Florida. Ooh. Yeah, anything in Florida is weird, you know. Uh, located in St. Augustine, Florida, Royal Hope Hospital was a Spanish military hospital from 1784 to 1821 before eventually being demolished. A replica of the original hospital was later built to house the wounded during the Seminole War, and eventually St. Augustine city workers were attempting to repair some water lines and dug in the area of the old hospital, only to discover that it had been built on what appeared to be an old Native American burial ground. Oh, kind of like in uh, Poltergeist? <clears throat> yes, exactly like Poltergeist. Nice. And we're talking about a real-life example of the infamous movie. So, um, as you might expect, due to its rather gruesome history and the fact that it was constructed on those sacred grounds, many reports have suggested it is, in fact, one of the most haunted places in all of Florida. In the surgeon's office, there have been reports of the equipment shaking on its own, while in the ward, visitors have said that the beds have actually jumped and knocked at their legs as they passed by. Um, All of this despite the fact that it is not the original building. However... Those who believe say the spirits of those who died at the hospital have remained on the grounds through all those years. Whoa. Uh Uh-huh. Number nine, the Tranquil Sanatorium in Canada. Located on Canlooms Lake in British Columbia, Canada, uh, Tranquil Sanatorium began its life as a ranch before owners began caring for tuberculosis patients, and it was converted into a full hospital um, in 1907. Specifically meant to treat victims of TB. And after treating more than 4,000 patients over the years, it it closed in the 1950s. And wild rumors began to surface that at the time of its closing, there was no sign of patients or staff, though that has been more or less proven to be false. It would eventually reopen, <clears throat> primarily serving as a hospital and training facility, but then shut its doors for good in 1985. And you may actually recognize it from several movies, including the recent version of The A-Team, as well as several television shows. Over the years, there have been reports of mysterious floating orbs throughout the facility, Whoa. inexplicable feelings of sadness, unease, and sudden drops in temperature. There have also been reports of mysterious voices and spectral figures, including that of a nurse who was allegedly murdered by a patient. Whoa. That's a pretty creepy story there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you spooked yet? Sort of. All right, you will be. Let's see. Number eight, the Sai Yang Pun Psychiatry Hospital in Hong Kong. Is that Japan? Uh, Hong Kong, actually. 
Located in Hong Kong, uh, Sai Ying Pun was a mental hospital built in, built in 1892. It has come to be known as the High Street Ghost House due to the many tales of the supernatural that have emerged. It was initially used as living quarters for the nursing staff until World War II, and at that time, it was rumored to have been seized by Japanese soldiers and used as an execution hall. Whoa. Yeah, dude. Serving as a mental hospital from 1947 to 1961, then the lone mental hospital in all of Hong Kong. It became a psychiatric outpatient facility until 1971. Nowadays, you would never know of its ghostly rumors by looking at it, as it is a community center housing several charity organizations. Uh, when it was abandoned in the 1970s, rumors started to circulate of the sounds of a woman crying or a loud thunderous sound emanating from the building. Whoa. Mysterious footsteps, visions, and a devilish man appearing at the second floor before bursting into flames and decapitated spirits wandering the halls at night have been all have been reported. Like insidious. Yeah, it's pretty metal, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> number seven is the Nocton Hall Hospital in England. Ooh. Nocton. Uh, unlike most other hospitals, Nocton Hall began life as a stately manor home until World War I <clears throat> when it was taken over and used by American forces as a place for injured soldiers to rest and recuperate. It was used again during World War II as a military hospital and has been used in a similar manner ever since, including as an American military hospital during the Gulf War. The intimidating building was abandoned in 1995 and multiple cases of arson rendered it unusable again. Whoa. Yeah, arson is when uh, people light things on fire. So a lot of the hospital was burned. Oh, uh -huh. that makes it even more creepy. It does, actually. Um, stories about stories abound of one ghost in particular haunting the grounds, a sobbing spirit of a young girl whose presence has been reported by various people who have stayed in the building. She is said to haunt one specific bedroom more than the others, with numerous people claiming to have been awoken at exactly 4.30 in the morning to see the spectral girl standing at the foot of the bed crying. The story continues that she is apparently the ghost of a servant girl who was murdered by the son of a man who owned Nocton Hall before it became a military hospital. Whoa. Mm -hmm. uh, number six is the old Changi Hospital in Singapore. That's a weird picture. That is the the Chinese flag. Oh. Or, yeah. Uh, built in... Where's that Japan? That's the Japanese flag. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Built in 1935, the old Changi Hospital has become one of the most haunted sites in all of Singapore over the years. And at the time it was built, it served as the Royal Air Force Hospital and was later used by the Japanese as a prison camp. It was right around this time that the old Changi Hospital became a torture chamber. Yeah, dude. So it should not come as a surprise that when there are regularly reported sightings of ghosts believed to be the victims of the Japanese, <clears throat> these days the new, now abandoned building, which ceased operation in 1997, has been the site of many supernaturally themed shows as camera crews attempt to catch evidence of otherworldly presence in the decrepit, spooky rooms and corridors. Visitors to Old Changi often come away with frightening stories and strange noises and encounters and occasionally feelings of nausea or tales of sensing a spirit following them even after they've left. Ooh. Pretty creepy. It's interesting. Yeah. Number five is the Arat Lunatic Asylum in Australia. Whoa. I mean, as if Australia isn't scary enough, right? With <laughs> everything out there is trying to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, giraffes. <laughs> giraffes? Yeah. I'm there's... thinking more of the bugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, heard, I saw a thing that said that Australia is just the place where Satan keeps all his pets. <laughs> Seriously, have you seen the spiders in Australia? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're scary. Yeah. Um, okay, so today it's known as Airedale, but when it opened in 1867, it was called Errat Lunatic Asylum, and it was the largest in all of Australia, featuring some bizarre and horrifying methods of treatment. Throughout its time as a functioning mental health care facility... Ararat housed tens of thousands of patients, and he was also reportedly home to some of the most dangerous and violent psychotics in the world. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. It remained open for 130 years, during which time a staggering 130,000 patients died there, probably why it's known as the most haunted, one of the most haunted places in all of Australia. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> the facility closed in 1998, but it was shockingly reopened three years later by the Northern Melbourne Institute of Technical and Further Education as a campus for the Australian College of Wine. 
Mm. Ghost sightings are still frequent and haunting haunted tours are given throughout various parts of, of the facility, including the morgue. Um, we're sure that probably isn't the slightest bit terrifying, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the morgue is where they keep all the dead bodies. Yeah. yeah. Scary. Number four, Severals Hospital in England. Ooh. <clears throat> There's something especially terrifying about psychiatric hospitals, which is probably why so many are rolling in rumors and speculation about hauntings. Uh, Severals Hospital in Colchester, England is no different, and it probably doesn't hurt its haunted reputation that it was once known for conducting psychiatric experiments like full frontal lobotomies and substantial electroshock therapy. Lobotomies is when they cut into your brain, dude. Whoa. No, that's messed up. Well, that, that's what they do, man. Seriously? Yeah, they got to cut out the crazy. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> In a rather terrifying twist, it has been suggested that these treatments were deemed cures or were used on people who exhibited moodiness or teenage defiance. Yeah, dude. So everyone with a mood would have their brain cut out? Yeah, cut out your attitude. Oh my gosh. What's someone do to you? No. Cut your attitude out. Do they still do that? Yeah, I'm going to take you down there tomorrow. No. <laughs> The hospital opened in 1913 with actual psychiatric treatments shutting down in the 1990s. It closed altogether in 1997 and it has since been subject to rampant vandalism, but has remained otherwise largely untouched. Of course, it likely will not remain untouched for long as current development plans could result in the hospital being torn down or in order to repurpose the land. So that's that's kind of the plans there for that one. Yeah. Number three, this one gets a little closer. This is Athens Mental Hospital in Ohio, USA. Uh Well, we're not in Ohio, but... Well, yeah, but it's... It's back in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. The Athens Mental Hospital, located in Athens, Ohio, opened its doors in 1874 and over the years adopted a few different monikers, including the Athens Hospital for the Insane, and it stayed in operation until 1993. Uh, By the 1950s, the hospital was treating more than... 1,800 patients at once and became famed for the infamous lobotomy procedure in housing violent criminals. Over time, the hospital became known as the Ridges, though its history has been somewhat shrouded in mystery. What the mystery... Ty- what's that? Oh, what type of mystery? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you that, sir. Nice. The mystery is largely due to the fact that any information about patients is kept under tight wraps with special permission needed from the state of Ohio to gain access. There are also more than 1,900 people buried on the grounds with their headstones marked by number only, no names attached. Uh-oh. Eventually, a large portion of the grounds was given to Ohio University. Yep. And in one thing that gives the hospital an extra creep factor is the 1978 disappearance of a female patient. Her body was found a year later in an abandoned ward, and you can still see a stain on the floor where her corpse was found more than three decades later. Whoa, that's scary. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, Taunton State Hospital in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is just a whole, like, cesspool of hauntings and scariness. I want to check it out, dude. That's yeah. where all the witch burnings happened Ooh. in Massachusetts. So, cool. now, of course, they have haunted hospitals, too, right? Burn the rich. Yeah, burn the rich. I yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Located in Taunton, Massachusetts, Taunton State Hospital was built in 1854 as a psychiatric hospital, and it boasts a rather horrifying story. One of the hospital's most famous patients was Jane Toppin, a serial killer who confessed to having murdered at least 31 people while working as a nurse. That guy's scary. Yeah, and yet, according to some of the stories, the people who ran Taunton State Hospital may have actually been even more terrifying than many of the criminally insane patients it housed. Rumors persist that some of the doctors and nurses would take the obviously unwilling patients into the basement and use them to conduct satanic rituals, and in its later years... Both patients and doctors reported feeling a tremendous sense of unease and even approaching the door to the basement. Or when even approaching the door to the basement. Whoa. Yeah. Reports abound of a shadow man who would crawl on the walls and watch the patients. It's Nightcrawler. Yeah, but at least you wouldn't feel lonely though, right? (laughs) At least someone's there watching you. Yeah. All right, buddy. Number one. What do you think it is? Um, um, Colorado, hopefully. No way, dude. It's in Australia. Again. Satan's lair, dude. Top, top of the morning to you. 
<laughs> Beechworth Lunatic Asylum in Australia is number one here. Originally known as Mayday Hills Lunatic Asylum, Beechworth was a sister hospital to the Ararat in Victoria, Australia, and was open for 128 years before shutting its doors for good in 1995. Both Beechworth and Ararat were opened in the same year after Victoria's lone mental institution suffered some overcrowded, or became overcrowded. Hmm. Um, and, and at its height, Beechworth housed roughly 1,200 patients. And it was remarkably easy to have someone committed, requiring only two signatures to do so. Hmm. All I had to do was sign your name, and you were crazy. That's, like, messed up. No. So if I, like... so. If you would sign your name on something, you'd be crazy? No, like, no, no. I could wait. sign you in and tell them you're crazy. Signature, you're done. And then you have to go there and live there. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> there were reports of mysterious deaths and disappearances at Beechworth. And in the facility's first laboratory for experimentation, operations and autopsies, jars filled with body parts adorn the shelves throughout the room. And these jars have since vanished as a fire took part of Beechworth in the 1950s. And the jars disappeared sometime around the restoration of the facility. Uh uh-uh. uh. Of course, when you consider that Beechworth's first superintendent believed the moon caused insanity and therefore would never go out at night without an umbrella, some of these practices began to make a big bit more sense. Um, overall, nearly 9,000 patients died at Beechworth, including a young girl who was mysteriously thrown from a window. And to this day, her death goes unsolved. Aww. So, but hey, they still offer uh, ghost and murder tours in the facility. Cool. So. That's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. So what do you think, man? You get your spooky fill of, of ghosts and goblins and hospitals? Yeah. Cool. So why don't we turn it over? Um, let's do a joke and lighten the mood. What do you think? Sure. Okay. All right, Paul. What do you have for us this week? Let's see. Um, should I uh, say last week's trivia? No, we're doing the joke. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, did you hear that they arrested the devil? <laughs> no, it was about time. They charged him with possession. <laughs> Good one, dude. Good one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty funny. I think that lightens up the mood, right? Yeah. How about we uh, make us a little bit smarter? You want to hit that trivia theme song? Sure. All right. Push the button, brother. Every week you come to us and you make us a little bit smarter and wiser with your trivia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to last week's trivia question and give us the answer. Okay. Uh, Last week's trivia question was, what was HTTP stand for? Uh Uh-huh. The answer was hypertext hypertext, uh, transfer protocol. That's right. Good job, buddy. Yeah. So what do you have for us this week? What's uh, what's another good trivia question you got for us? What animal cannot stick out their tongue? Ooh, that's an interesting one. The answer is me. <laughs> well, don't give me the answer yet, fool. Sorry. <laughs> no, but where can people give us the answer if they have it? Um, at your page. Mm-hmm. 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 You should know it by now. No, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's you can long. write to the email at justokpod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Or you can get us on the Facebook page at facebook.com slash. This podcast is just okay. There you go. Bingo, bango, buddy. Um, we are also on SoundCloud, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Audible, and yeah. Apple Music. Anywhere anywhere cool like that that you should listen to podcasts. <laughs> um, just type in, in the search bar there. This podcast is just okay. Mm-hmm. You come up with a. With a picture of me wearing a mask and you hear this little guy talk because it's awesome. Yeah. So anything other than that, man, any, any other plugs you got? Nope. I'm still making stickers and pins if anybody wants any. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got some cool, this podcast is just okay merchandise there. Which, you know what? I'm going to cut out Cafe Press, dude. I don't want anything to do with them now because I can't log into my mm-hmm. site. So we are not doing, we're not doing t-shirts until I can figure out how to print them myself. We're going to stick with the pins and stickers for now because I think that's fashionable, right? Yeah. The stickers, put them on your car, on your laptop, put them on your dog. I don't care. It's whatever. 
But <laughs> um, with that, I guess that's our show this week, right? Right yeah. under 30 minutes and a quick little bite of information for the day to get you going for the week, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So with that, we will say have yourselves a week and we will catch you guys next time. Next time.